Hello. Oh, hello. Hello. I'm Malcolm Housley. And I'm Janice Baker. <laughs> Why do so many athletes want to skate on thin ice? Oh, and what happens to all the children from broken and damaged families? We'll endeavour to answer both of those questions next, next on our, on our time. time. Janice, skating on thin ice is interesting because we're actually talking about ice skating mm. and ice skating ice in ice rinks is only about that thick. You wouldn't have thought. I you would wouldn't have think thought that. Most that people was, don't. No, I would have thought it was so much thicker. And we have one of Australia's uh, leading ice skating coaches who's been travelling internationally for the last couple of years mm -hmm. and he'll be talking to us shortly. But first... We have Trude Paladin with us. True, welcome, welcome to our Welcome to time. the program. Thank you. True, you have a really interesting story because you are fostering a whole family of children. I am, yes. How, how did all this come about and how did you become a foster parent? OK, um, in my case, I'm actually what's called a relative carer. That means that I'm looking after children who are actually in my own family. Um, I've had two children. Uh, of first your up, own? Um, yes. no, no, th these are children of my family. I've oh. never had any of my own children. Oh, right, okay. So, I, first of all, I raised two children of a family member. Right. And um, then a couple of years after they had grown up and moved out, I received a phone call. Could I take on four more? From another member of the From family? The same member of the family. Same member of the fa same family. God. Same family. Same family. Wow. True. Is it, and you have knowledge of this. Is it difficult to uh, foster children just generally? It is difficult to foster children. Um, you need to pass a lot of tests. Mm. You need to go through training. With relative care, it's a bit different. You get the children, then you do the training, but everyone ends up doing the training. So foster parents do it all first. Yes. And relative carers kind of get the children handed to them and then try it. And I think I'd actually would have preferred to do the training, training first, first because it's a lot harder when, when you've got juggling children to look at. Uh, well. To go along to the training. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Of course. Of course, that makes perfect sense. How do you think it differs from a regular family if they were your children? Is there any difference? Do you think? Uh, there is difference. Um, I have to ask permission for certain things that I do with the children. For example, if I wanted to take the children to Melbourne, I can't just pop up, OK, we're going to go for a holiday to Melbourne. I have to actually ask permission. I have to wait till that permission is given. That could take five, six, seven weeks. Right. Sometimes it's not given because they're, you know, they're not sure if that should happen. Uh, same thing if the children want to have a sleepover somewhere, I have to ask permission and make sure that that's OK. Um, the parents of that household have to have a police check. Um, any mm. other adults in the household have to have a police check. So it's very different from having your own children. Uh, sorry, so... You're saying you have to have permission, but they are family members, children of family members. Yes. So you can't just pick up the phone and say, this is what I'd like to do. You give me permission. It has to be permission through an authority. That's right. So I'm, I might pick up the phone and I might ring their social worker. Yeah. And then she will go up to her supervisor yeah. and arrange all the permissions and then come back to me with the, with the permission. Yeah. Because they're not actually in my guardianship. Um, children under this are under the guardianship of the minister. Right. And in this case, the four children are under that guardianship until they're 18 years of age. Gosh. Um, and they will stay in my care until yeah. they're 18. Yeah. You know, um, I just recently saw a program on the ABC with a gay couple of men who had adopted mm. some children. I think we both saw the same yeah, program. Yeah, they were marvellous. They? they were marvellous and they had created a whole family unit. Um, and they're advised not to take male children, which is pretty stupid, really, but still, yeah. they're advised not to take male children, had female children. Yeah. And then one of the... Their first child that they had fostered had a child and they ended up adopting that child. So it's a real mixture Gosh. within a family. But the point really is, if there are kids in need, it's a great shame that more people can't be in this position to foster children, don't you think? It certainly is. And one of the saddest things is that there are family members who are in that position and they say no. Um, I was recently at a Connecting Foster Carers meeting and I was told 75% of family members who were asked flatly turned down the opportunity of taking children, but even worse, refused to pass on contact details of other family members. See, and a lot a of those shame. children end up in residential care until they're 18. They never get to live in a family home. That's a real shame. Mm, we we yeah. also have other knowledge of other children exactly in that position. And you can see the difference when kids have got... Well, I mean, the simple thing is we all need someone to love us at the end of the day, isn't it? That's right.
Didn't and it, but then, it also for the children that are younger to have that family feeling, to have that that love surrounding Well, them. yes, but but even then there are restrictions about hugging children, aren't there? That's right. In my case, because they're my family members, I can hug them. Foster carers are generally advised against hugging or becoming emotionally attached, which... I think is utterly ridiculous. I, think that is. I was actually threatened originally with the first two that I had that I was getting too emotionally attached because I fought for the education of the children and that I was making it too important. And I actually had to pay a lawyer so they couldn't accuse him of being too emotionally attached when he made the very same arguments that I had made. I know, I know. I have no idea this goes on. This is on. why Trude's on the program, because wow. neither did I until no. we started to talk about it. And, and it's just, it, it is a really frightening Incredible. thing. I was adopted, so I was lucky to go into a family that really wanted a child, took complete ownership. My sister in the same, sister from another family, same oh. situation. Oh. But if you weren't lucky enough, and really that's the truth, lucky enough to be adopted, this is the other alternative, isn't it? Well, there's That's two other right. alternatives, to be fostered or to stay in a, in a care home. That's right. So if if you don't go into relative care or into foster home, you go into what's called residential care. Residential care. And in residential care, things are done very differently. Children don't get individual activities because there's not the staff available. So if one child likes to do dance and another child likes to do football, but the house's thing is soccer, those children do soccer or they do nothing because there's no one to drive them to individual activities, no. there's no one to make sure that they take so part they in those things. have to go things. in the same direction. Whereas in my them. household, I've got children doing singing, dance, um, acting, gymnastics, calisthenics, piano. How do you They're spread all... yourself that <laughs> far, girl? <laughs> and well, I, I play taxi. <laughs> and not only that, but she's a marriage celebrant as well. I am, yes. Really? Yes. Gosh. Oh, my God. <laughs> Wonder Woman. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, this is part of being alive and being part of the human race. That's how you see it, isn't it, really? Well, that's it. And for the children, having them in those activities, that gives them those opportunities that come from that. It gives them the those friends that they yeah. make in that. Yeah. It gives them something to look forward to outside of their own life. Sure. And mm. it gives them the chance to dream. And dreaming is so important. important. It's, that's very true. But having the love yeah. of somebody that you, you can turn to, because we all need a parent, mm. uh, whether you're, it might be part of a single parent family. Grandparents. Or grandparents. Mm. You need that structure of people around you who genuinely care about you. And that can be in all sorts of shades of care. Mm. You know, uh, constant 24 hour care, or it can be see you once a week care. It can be in any of those things and it's mm. the relationships. So Trude, would, do you think you would have become a foster carer had you not been in this situation? Had that ever entered your mind before it was suggested to you? No, no. Um, I had looked after a friend's daughter um, who unfortunately was also in a terrible position and then ended up, um, this is how she even got in contact with the department, was getting the department to take charge of her but she stayed living with me. But again, it wasn't something I had asked for. I just kind of got given this 17-year-old yeah. yeah. girl. And <laughs> wow. Well, we must make it clear. We're not criticising the department or the way this works at all. We're just talking about your individual Experience. knowledge of the way that you're doing what you're doing. That's mm. right. But would you recommend to people that were perhaps in your situation before that they should investigate Absolutely. this? Oh, it is frustrating. Don't get me wrong. It is definitely frustrating at times. And at times, what you hear from the children and what they've gone through breaks your heart. But it's worth it. Every single second is worth it. They are beautiful, wonderful children who will drive you mad one minute <laughs> and then make you want to hold them and hug no. them the next. They're all sitting over there and that's not true at all. Not at all. They're being very good. Very yes, good. Yes, they are being very good. Um, so it, talking to anybody else... Um, perhaps who's had a family, perhaps they had a family young and they've grown up and they've moved into state or whatever, would you recommend people just checking out what they could do in this area to I continue a family? I would love people to check out what they can do in this area. If they saw the kids that are living in residential care who are never going to have a family, and some of these, you know, I'm, I know one particular one, he's a beautiful little boy 
and he could he, he wants to be loved so much. Mm. Is this and the one we both know yes. you're talking about? Yes. And there's thousands, there's literally thousands of children throughout Australia in the same position. And these They're come filled from... with love and nobody to give it to. Yes, and these come from families that are either broken up or perhaps are no longer with us or a whole lot of situations. All sorts there's of no, situations. There's no uh, common thing that children need to be fostered, is there? No, they come from all sorts of different backgrounds. It may be that something's happened to the parents that they literally cannot look after them. It may be that the parents have been neglectful. There are so many different situations. But all of these kids are exactly the same. They need love. Now, one last question that we must ask. So the government provides money to help you do this because they're not asking you to do this by yourself on your own funds? That's right. They um, provide what's called reimbursement. So it covers a certain amount of the cost of what it takes to raise children. But at the same time, obviously, you're putting in too because you want them to be exposed to as much as possible. That's right, yeah. yes. Singing, dancing lessons, it all costs money. <laughs> well, it That's does. right, yeah. <laughs> Trude, thank you so much for being part of our time. I think you're this welcome. is a story that perhaps we can get someone from the department to talk about yes, as well in the future. Yeah, absolutely. But will you stay with us because we're going Absolutely. to be talking about ice skating next. And boy, will that cost you the earth. <laughs>
just over a thousand people since 1989, I think. And people it. wouldn't even know about wow. this. No. But to give people an understanding of the, the look of the types of shows, we've got some shots here of you mm. in some of the shows, yep. some of which are ice skating shows, which we'll talk about. Richard oh, Richard yeah. had his leg up there. Mm -hmm. You also learnt to eat fire, which That's is right. a bit yep. extraordinary. I did a fire act for there a There you are, blowing fire out. Don't yep. stand close. <laughs> Yes, we, well, to, to survive in the business, you've got to be able to do everything. So yeah. you've got to be able to sing and dance and act and skate. And Blow fire, fire out yeah, Malcolm knows all about it. <laughs> <laughs> These were shows of in Singapore, weren't they? That's right. These but you shows. joined me on a couple of those I shows. I did, in fact. Yes, so skating has provided a, a lot of wonderful opportunities. Well, I wouldn't have travelled as much had I not actually yeah, learned to skate you. in the show that we... I didn't, couldn't skate before I was involved with this show. Oh, That's okay. right. Yeah. And I've also taken lessons from Richard, which leads us to the second part of the story. Mm. I've got to say, in truth, you're a great coach oh, or great you. teacher because I couldn't spin or do any of that stuff, and I, not that I can do it very well anymore, but in truth, in just one lesson with you, mm. I could actually spin. Because on the bottom of a skate, people don't realise it's not flat. No, it's not. There's um, a radius. Yeah. yeah. So you've got to feel... A rocker. You've got to feel a rocker. that part. Mm. Yeah, you've got to feel that okay. part to do all those things. And then the toe picks. So mm. what Richard has become... You're really the top skater... Uh, coach. Top, coach. Skating coach in Australia. I don't think you can say that, but I could. Well, I can't say that, no. <laughs> <laughs> but, but my students would all agree with no, you. No, well, you have had a lot of success with I your students. I have had a lot of success. Yeah, yeah. but interesting enough, yeah, your original coach mm -hmm. was Belinda. Yeah. She was Belinda Coulthard then. Yeah. She's now... Belinda Noonan. And Belinda is the person who, in the Olympic, the Winter Olympics... She she actually is a commentator for the mm. Winter Olympics, yeah. She, so she's a commentator, but she's also heavily involved in uh, OWI, which is a Winter Olympic Institute, So, and they support our winter athletes. So. And Gosh. just recently, I don't think you know this, but just recently you were contracted to go to New Zealand to choreograph... The TV just tell commercial. us that story, because... That's amazing. Yeah, what? pretty amazing. They, they, they were casting for skaters to go to be part of this uh, Olympic TV commercial that was being shot in New Zealand. Mm. And I happened to say, oh, so you need a choreographer? And they went, yeah, we, we're actually casting for a choreographer. So I submitted all my stuff along with everybody else, I guess, and I got the job. Wow. And what was even more amazing was it was shot in Queenstown, and which was lovely, and you'd be driving up these roads for about an hour out of Queenstown, and you'd drive up through the clouds and to the top of the mountain, and as you come through the clouds, everything's white. Oh. And we did, um, we shot this commercial on these fields of ice, oh. like ten football fields. Is it, was it, a, right? it was amazing. You could just skate forever. Freezing. So how many, how many did you have to choreograph then for Only this? Only two. Only oh. two skaters. Wow. Yeah. So it was a pretty easy, very interesting. They used all the latest technology with those drones and yeah. and that sort of stuff. It was pretty Fantastic. amazing. So. And that Gosh. was for the uh, Olymp 2018 Olympics. Amazing. Mm. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. Yeah. Well done. So uh, we've got a couple of shots here that we have shown before of you and James, because James Min has one done very students, well yeah. with you. Yep. Um, you uh, this one was a nice was show Giuseppe. here in Adelaide. That's yeah. Giuseppe, isn't yep. it? He's I'm, grown up now. He has grown up. I've been very lucky. A lot of my students here, that's James. That was at his first... Where was that? First uh, Junior Worlds, I think. In what country? Oh, probably uh, Hungary or... I'm not sure. We've been to so many countries. <laughs> yeah, just reel off some of the places you've been in the last 12 well, months. Well, uh, Hungary, Budapest twice, mm, Colorado Springs, in Hong Kong, Thailand, Taipei. Um, God, I feel exhausted. And all over the place. Grab, Christ, you know, just all over the place. Do you get jet lag? Sometimes. Oh, yeah. God, yeah, but you're really good. You just you just automatically click into the. Yeah, well, I've done a lot of travel with all the shows to Asia, oh. and um, so I'm used to travelling. So for me, it's pretty it easy. But when you've yeah. got students with your uh, or athletes with you, they got to have a their sleeping hours have got to be met and yeah. they've got to try to be regulated so that we don't uh, get there and they're jet lagged because yeah. they're the ones that have got to perform. perform. Mm. And it is very regulated when you think about Absolutely, it. Absolutely, yeah. And how have you achieved the success you've achieved as a coach? Has it been from what Belinda taught you? Your well, Belinda was was my coach. She still is my coach. She's like my mentor in, in the skating world. And um, I guess I've always thought I'd never known enough so I've always gone out to try to expand my knowledge and I bring that back I've worked with the world's best and I 
keep bringing that back to my students mm -hmm. and uh, I've got a really good bunch of kids that really work hard. They're there five days a week, six days a week, some of them. And they train for three hours a day. Yeah, and that's the commitment. They, they give that's the me. commitment. I'm only interested, I'm a competitive coach, so I'm only interested in competitive skaters and anyone that wants to do it for a hobby, then I'm not the coach for them. Yeah, but when you say that, you mm. also, with the amount of shows that you've done and the amount of people you've put on ice in mm. all sorts of places, mm. including me, mm. and roller skates. And I roller mean, skates, so. yeah, we did a roller <laughs> skate I mean, show in Brunei. That, so, yes. <laughs> I mean, it's been it's been a fascinating time, and you know, when people write their books and stories about what they've achieved and done in life, it's really amazing when you look at your package of yeah. all these levels of stuff. That do you you've remember done. our first ice shows in Singapore? No, oh, do I we, was. We arrived in the the ice rink that we had to sent up there had been moved around and broken to bits, and they had to remake the whole thing, and we'd been there all night setting this rink up and it was nearly done. They would fill it up with water, the pipes were all in place, just about turn the compressors on. <laughs> And up above, about ten stories above, they dropped a screwdriver down and it pierced the, the liner ice. that the re and water went everywhere. <laughs> Remembering that the ice is really only about this thick, yeah. you see. Oh, no. Malcolm was asleep in the chair and Tony was asleep on the floor. And no, what? Well, we, well, I had to stay there. They ended up going home, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But oh, you we, managed to get it all sorted, yeah, ready for the fixed, show. We couldn't go home, though, until the... Uh, MR, no, what is it called? The MRT the, MRT, started. until the MRT started, which right. was 6 o'clock in the morning. And we hadn't slept for, like, 24 hours before that. That's so it's correct. Oh. Been two hours they turn the air conditioning off at night, yeah. so that made it even harder to make ice. Yeah. Oh, you've, tried, no. you've got to make ice yeah. in about eight hours. Eight hours, yeah. nine hours. Um, oh. An amazing <laughs> life, cool. Richard. You've had an amazing life, and you've obviously got a great deal in front of you, and a whole lot of other champions that yes. you're no doubt going to train Produce, for Olympics yep. and Gosh. whatever else. Yep. Stay with us. We'll be back with Trude in a tech to say goodbye and a few more stories. What an interesting couple of people we've been talking to. Trude, would you uh, take more children on, do you think, as time goes on? Um, I probably would. That weren't family? <laughs> um, probably. There's so many kids that need homes and the thought of, I've got a home and they don't, would just be too much to say no. So mm. yes. and, But you've had to do quite a bit of renovation, haven't you, to add to the family? Yes, and I have the greatest landlord on earth who very <laughs> kindly um, converted. We had a giant shed out the back and he uh, kindly converted that into two bedrooms. Fantastic. Mm. Well done. Brilliant. Mm. Richard, where, where are you yeah, off to I was next? just about to say yeah, that. So well, Reading Mum, no, we didn't where say Where am I to what? Yeah, where are you going next? Where am I going next? Yes, yeah, mm. so have you got another trip planned? Well, I, yeah, I go to... Brisbane in a couple of weeks time for the Australian National Championships. And you just came back from doing I, some... I just came back from somewhere. Where did I just come back Tasmania. From? Tasmania, that's right. I was doing a training, a training camp for <laughs> the skaters in Tasmania. That's right. I'm so <laughs> sorry so for you. Proud. And then a week before that, where, I was in yeah. Sydney doing a training camp in Sydney, so <laughs> I keep forgetting where I am. So do your, do your family still remember who oh, you are? Oh, don't talk to me about that. Oh. Now, you girls two are, girls. Yeah. yeah. Now, tell me, which one, or well, either of them interested in skating? Well, the youngest one was, yes. and then at about age four or five, she decided she didn't want to do it, and she's gone to dance, so she's in the other side of the industry, which I'm happy about. And which the youngest is also one, your side as yes, well. Yes, yeah. also my side. Uh, and the youngest one also has started to skate just recently, oh, so well, not never pushing know, you it. Might have no, no, yeah. no. But thanks well. very much for joining us. Yes, thank you, you so know, much. You know, in addition to broadcasting on air, Channel 44 Adelaide also streams their broadcast via their website, which is www.c44.com.au. Just visit the website on your desktop, laptop, lap tablet or mobile phone oh, and not. click on the Watch Live Streams link at the top of the page. Past episodes of programs, including our time, are available to watch by clicking on the Watch TV On Demand link or by using the search bar at the top of the page. Channel 44 are very busy now working on a new custom-made app for your mobile and tablet device. In the meantime, the best way to watch Channel 44 or Channel 31 is online through their website. That's right. And until next time, Janice. Yes. 
Take care of yourself. See you next time. And keep yourself nice till then. This is our last program. Happy Christmas. Happy Christmas. Yes. See you <laughs> next year. Bye.